guys, it's Erin, long time no see. This video is going to be a kind of all-purpose video. So according to YouTube, it's been 62 days since my last upload. A little longer than I intended for a variety of reasons. School was one of them. I also had some stuff going on in my personal life. And um, I don't really want to talk about that on the YouTube. Uh, but I also hate it when people talk about like, oh, my vague personal life. And you're like, oh no, is everything okay? Um, so this picture on my Instagram, the caption explains what happens. So if you're really curious, you can go read that. If you don't care, cool. I did not film for a while. <laughs> And now I'm back um, and I'm really excited. School's out for the semester and it wasn't so much that I was busy as I just, I didn't really feel like filming. So I didn't because this is totally 100% a hobby and I'm only going to do it if I actually want to. And so I suddenly want to again. So this video is kind of that. I'm going to share with you a couple of great books that I've read in the last two months and what I'm reading right now. So here are some things that I have been reading. Uh, none of them are classics, sorry. Um, I just, again, with the, the feeling, I'm definitely a mood reader and outside of the stuff that I had to read for school, which I struggled with, I just I haven't been in the mood for classics. So I've been reading different things. Uh, like Maggie Stiefvater's Call Down the Hawk. Uh, Maggie Stiefvater is one of my ride or die authors. I own almost all of her books. I have one that I don't have. And it's an early one. I just haven't found it yet. This is her newest release. It came out in November and I got it and read it like the week it was released because we need this. This is the Owlcrate uh, exclusive edition. The other one is because of course I have two. This is my favorite one. I kind of like the Owlcrate one. Also since I read this book I feel like I have to hold this one up to talk about it. Anyway um, this is a kind of a sequel trilogy to the Raven Cycle it, uh, stars Ronan Lynch, who is a main character in the Raven Cycle, and it follows him exploring the ability that he was kind of starting to learn about in the Raven Cycle, and he realizes that there are more people in the world with his ability, and there are also people in the world who think that the people with his ability should not exist. And it just like, oh, it was really good. It had all of the, the kind of relational things that I really loved about the Raven Cycle. It feels a little bit, a little bit grittier than the Raven Cycle, but that makes sense because the main character in the Raven Cycle is Richard Gansey III, and he is not a gritty person, um, but Ronan Lynch is. And so of course the, the thing that he would get wrapped up in would be a little bit grittier. Um, I loved seeing Ronan and his relationship with his brothers and the new friendships that he's made and the old friendships that he's kept. I thought it was just really well done and I can't wait for book two to come out eventually because there might have been a cliffhanger. I don't usually like cliffhangers but I couldn't, I just, uh, Stiefvater just, uh, she managed it so well. I'm very impressed. It was one of those cliffhangers where you're like, yes, this is the natural logical ending to this book. Also, what the heck? <laughs> so, um, and not not in the same way. That she, like in the Raven Cycle, she would often like finish this the kind of story, the narrative of the one book, and then like open up a new door. This one, she did not open anything new. There's just like all the threads are hanging out, but you still feel satisfied. So, good kudos, kudos to her. Um, another book. It has lots of threads is The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. Erin Morgenstern is also one of my favorite authors and this is the first book that she's published in like seven or eight years and so I was very thrilled. I was a little worried too that it wouldn't live up to her first book which I just love so much and I think this one was even better. This is about a guy named Zachary Ezra Rollins who when he's 11 or 12 finds a door painted in an alley near his house and it looks magical to him and he's like I think if I tried to open this door even though it's painted on a wall it would function like a door and open and I could go on an adventure and then he's like mm, no I don't think I'm I, I I'll pass and he always kind of vaguely regrets not checking that out um, and then when he is a 20-something adult 
uh, in graduate school, he comes across this book called Sweet Sorrows from the library, and he is startled to find that narrative of the boy finding the door in the alley in the story. And he's like, that's me. I'm confused. <laughs> Why is this here? What is going on? Because he'd never told anybody about what happened and there wasn't anybody around. So like, how is the story here? And so he starts to explore it and it leads him into this really big adventure of discovery and magic. And it is kind of like urban fantasy. Um, it's set in our world, but there's a fantasy world on the other side of the doors. And it's really about, it's about narrative and storytelling and fairy tales and, you know, epic journeys and all of the amazingness. This book is a little bit, it's not challenging to read. It requires the reader to do some work. So if you want a, a, a any kind of story, but if you want a fantasy, that kind of like hands you all of the information when you need it and doesn't make like you just want to like enjoy the ride this is maybe not the book for you as I described in my Goodreads review Morgan Stern kind of hands you about a hundred threads and says hold these and you're like this this is a lot of them what and then she starts weaving the story towards you and she keeps handing you other threads and you're sort of juggling things and then suddenly like this little thread that you thought was super unimportant and uninteresting and kind of had forgotten about and almost let drop, like, boom, it's part of the main story now. And you're like, what? How did that happen? Yeah, Morgan Stern just does, like, one of her skills and one of the things that I like about her writing is not just that it's lyrical and beautiful and she tells good stories, but she also does it in a really interesting way um, as far as the formatting goes. And she does kind of push her readers to to do a little work and to kind of hold a lot of pieces of the story in in their hands or in, in your mind. Just kind of trust her to, to to tie it together. And she does. At the moment, I am rereading The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. This is her first book. And it's really one of my favorite books. I've reread this a bunch of times and I hadn't read it for a while. And I was like, you know, I'm just like not ready to leave her writing behind. But I'm also not ready to reread The Starless Sea, which I will do soon, I'm sure. So, The Night Circus. Uh, I'm about 220 pages into it, so like about halfway. And I'm really loving it. It's been long enough that like while I remember the kind of like main arc of the story, I've, I've forgotten the nuances. And so I, I enjoy um, reading those. This is about a magic competition between two, two mu magicians' pupils. Um, and the the kind of stage or board, game board for their competition is this circus, the Cirque du Rêve, which opens at sunset and closes at dawn. It's a night circus. It's about the two main characters. It's also about the people that their competition affects in ways that they never thought that it would. It's about the circus itself, which is kind of its own character in the story. It's quite wonderful. This one is also told in, in a slightly um, a linear format. This one jumps around in time. So it starts out pretty linear. Um, it does jump in time, but only forward. You're like maybe 50 pages in and then all of a sudden you're like 30 years in the future with completely different people. And um, again, if you're paying attention and you make sure you read the, the little dates at the beginning of each chapter, it's usually fine. So anyway, I love that book also. And then look, it's a classic. Every Christmas, the last, this is the third year I've been doing it, I read one of Dickens's Christmas novellas. And so this year it's The Cricket on the Hearth. And I'm only, I can't even give you a plot summary because I'm only like a third of the way into it and I have no idea what's going on. There's a carrier who's like a mailman, package guy. Um, he has a wife named, he calls her Dot. I think her real name is Mary and a baby. She's much younger than him. And that's about as far as I've gotten. It's, it's a fun sort of way to get into the Christmas spirit and all of that. Also just this um, edition is really cool. It's a two volume edition. This is volume two. Um, a penguin, it's from like the seventies and it just has, I just, I just like it. It feels all vintage and I don't know, it's fun. So that is kind of what's up right now. I will be back soon 
well after Christmas with a video about what my reading plans for next year are and then I'll be back after the new year with my reading wrap up. I don't like doing wrap ups until the month is over because I know that I will absolutely be reading and and probably will finish at least two or three more books from now until then if not more you never know so anyway those are my plans um it's great to be back i missed you all thank you for sticking around and for those of you guys who have subscribed in the last two months look it's a video see i am alive um so anyway merry christmas happy holidays happy winter if that's your thing and um i will see you later